Hi guys, I'm back. Um, this is I Practice Stitchcraft, I'm Nicole. Um, if you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Um, it's been about three and a half months since I did a traditional floss tube. Um, and there's various reasons. Um, nothing really worth getting into. Um, but if you film floss tube, you may have experienced where it's been a while and then it starts to feel overwhelming. Um, so kind of what I've decided that I'm going to do today is show you the many things I've worked on in the three and a half months uh, since I filmed, show you a little bit of haul, um, some, some recent things that have come in. Um, but really, I'm going to try to simplify this month, or this floss tube, I should say, um, so that it's a little more manageable. I'm not going to try to insert all of the, uh, where was this project last time you saw it, um, all of that stuff. Really what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of a simple reset, and then hopefully I'll be able to pick up with regular floss tubes from here on out, and I'll be able to do the normal things, um, you know, showing you where I was and whatnot. Um, so as far as life updates go, not a ton. Um, I've been trying to recharge from the school year. Now I'm starting to get ready for the next school year. Um, the biggest thing that happened, uh, I guess maybe about two weeks after my last floss tube. Come here, Birdie. Come here. Good girl. Come here. Good girl. Um, is we brought a dog into the house. Um, this is Liberty. I call her Birdie though. <gasps> Do you see that puppy? Do you see that puppy in the in the computer? Um she is a Cavapoo, so she is uh, half Cavalier, half Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, half Poodle, 100% cute. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen her there. Um, she is my joy. Um, she does not, in her, uh, she's five months old, almost six months old. Um, her puppy energy can only be held for so long. Um, but this is Birdie, Birdie Bots, Tater Tots, you know, all the nicknames you start calling your dogs. Um, just all the fuzzy, fuzzy cuteness that I love so much. Okay, I'll let you be free now. Um, so that's the big thing that has been taking my time and attention. Oh, you want to come back up? Um, lately, she's just so cute and so full of energy all the time. Um, so I'll keep you updated on Birdie as we go. Um, now she's going to crawl around the couch. Luna's still here. She's, ooh. I can't point to her. There we go. She's right there. She's in her, in her cage. The cage is open. It looks like it's closed. The door's uh, open though. It's just so straight. You can't see it. Um, so she may come over and join us at some point. She and Birdie um, get along well. They love to play with one another, uh, chase each other around the house and, and run away from each other and, and uh, just have fun. Um, Birdie has decided that she's going to chill out next to me for the moment. She doesn't stay anywhere very long. Um, so that is that. No, thank you, Birdie. Um, so I think I'm just going to jump right into my whips, my works in progress, the things that I've been working on since we last saw each other back at the beginning of May. Um, yeah, so the 
first one, and these are in no particular order. Um, just kind of how they're sitting next to me on the couch, how I can grab them. Um, this is a full coverage piece I'm working on. Um, and yes, there's not much to see there. It's literally just all a couple of shades of blue. Um, it's a night sky to start with. This is a Cinderella's castle pattern um, that I got on Instagram. Uh, I don't have the pattern right here. I will show you. You know what? This I will put a picture in. I'll put in a picture um, here of what that will look like when it's done. But it's uh, a beautiful night scene of Cinderella in her carriage driving up to the castle. Um, and that will be a gift for someone 4,752 years from now when it's done. Um, but I'm working on that with Pattern Keeper. And um, I don't really have a lot of any experience doing full coverage without Pattern Keeper. So I don't really know um, the difference between doing full coverage with Pattern Keeper and without it. But what I can tell you is that I very much enjoy the experience of using Pattern Keeper. Um, and I should say I kind of took um, working on those diagonal blocks from um, Jesse Marie Does Stuff. Jesse Does Stuff? Jesse Marie Does Stuff. You guys know her. I'll link her below anyway. Um, next up is a paper crane stitches pattern. It is Rose Apothecary for all the Schitt's Creek fans out there. Um, worked on this a little bit more. Um, I added this window um, and some of the border down here where the sign will go um, and then, you know, continued putting in some of these bricks. The bricks guys look so super cool and um, they'll have some back stitching between them, which is going to really, I think, add to the effect. But I just really think she nailed the design and the colors of, of the brick there. So I pulled that out recently. Um, I've kind of created a little bit of a schedule for myself, which I'll get at the end. I'll get into, I guess, a little more after I show you this stuff. Um, so I was glad to be able to pull that out. I worked on also um, my Taylor and Cromwell Broadway salve, but I did not get a ton done on this. Um, honestly, I should probably start working on the letters because I'm, the border's a little bit overwhelming. Um, so I never really want to pick it up because it's just a lot. Um, so the border, as you can see, the border is, um, it's meant to look like stage lights, and it's going to go all the way around the word uh, Broadway, and each letter represents a different show. Um, so you'll see here, I started filling in some of the lights, so all of these lights get filled in, and then um, between these black lines, it actually gets all filled in with um, 310. So it is, it's a very heavy um, border. So maybe I should start some of the letters just to get myself back engaged in this one again. Uh, but I did add a little more. The border is also a very easy kind of grab and go project when when you need to not you when I need to grab something to um, to work on because it it just repeats over and over again. Ah, here's the bag for that. This project has 
so many colors, guys. Solve for this project. I've only used three of them so far. All right. Um, to keep on trucking on here, the next thing I have is, um, and some of these, yeah, some of these I missed the project bag on. If the um, project doesn't fit in the project bag, I may not have grabbed it. Um, so the next one I'm going to show you is Let Freedom Ring by Leela Studio, and I will um, insert a picture of that here-ish uh, to show you what that will look like when it's done. This is another project that's going to take me forever, but it's 100% going to be worth it when it's done. Um, why haven't I given you guys any details of what everything is on? Hmm. Let me, let me really quick go back. Cinderella, um, it's all called the Cult War DMC in the project, and um, this is just a um, an easy count Ada that has the um, ten by ten squares marked on it. Um, the simply the best project. This is, um, I believe, Silver Moon. Ada. Oh yes, 18 count Silver Moon Ada, um, and also all the called for uh, DMCs. Um, the Broadway Sal is also all the called for DMCs you know, 7 billion of them. And the fabric on that was um, an 18 count hand dyed Ada from a stash unload. So I don't actually have a color name for it. Um, yeah. Um, so as I was saying, my Let Freedom Ring by Leela's Studio, um, um, while I'm pulling it up, this is what it looks like. Um, so this is the width of the first page, what I've done here on this border. And then I just started kind of working my way down. Um, I absolutely love the, the design of this and the motifs there's, as I'm working on it, there's just, um, some really cool details that I'm, I'm seeing, you know, um, this, oops, this little guy in the corner here, just a simple little addition that just, I think adds so much and, the cool effect of this looking almost like a three-dimensional spiral. Um, I just think she did some really beautiful design work on this pattern. Um, so this is an under the sea fabric. It is um, 32 count Jobelin and the color is autumn. Um, and all of the flosses are called for, the called for. Uh, there's a lot of over dye called for in this one, but um, I kitted with the called for on this. So there's nothing, um, special to point out about that, but just absolutely love the way that this is coming along. Makes me want to pull this guy back out. Moving along. Um, I just worked on this one a little bit more yesterday. This is uh, Dreaming Frida by Barbara Anna. Again, I'll, um, I don't have a picture of a cover photo for this, so I'll put a picture in of what this is going to look like. Um, she was released in three parts. I'm well behind. All three parts are out now. Um, so this is where I am. So all this down here uh, was the first part. And this is just what I started working on. This is the, the second part here. Um, fabric wise, this is um, 32 count Lugana country mocha 
for some reason the 32 is country mocha, not vintage country mocha, but um, it's just such a solid neutral. I really love it, and I love the way the colors pop on this. I don't know if that's coming across well, but... And also, all of the called for DMCs, because as far as I'm concerned, you don't mess with Barbara Anna's colors. She just, she has such a great eye for color. Um, all right, up next is uh, my Frog Works Year One pattern from the Black Needle Society, designed by Katie Landis. Um, I keep putting my notebook down like I'm not going to need it. Oh, I do have a cover photo for you on this one. Hang on. That is what the year one part will look like. I have year two um, kitted and ready to go, but I'm doing them all on one piece of fabric. So um, I'm not going to start year two until I finished year one. Um, so this is also all the called for... Uh, colors, um, which is mostly actually all over dyed. Um, and it is a 32 count special dye Lugana from hand dyed by Rolanda. Um, I sent her a picture and said, I need a fabric, a very large piece of fabric. Um, and I, I showed her the picture. I said, I, this is kind of the look I'm going for. And, and she dyed this guy, um, which is very nice. So I'm almost at a page finish on this. Um, there's some over one text that goes here. Um, the beginning of, of the golden snitch. And then like finishing up the um, birdie box every flavor beans. That's what's left on page one, and then I'll, everything's backwards, sorry. And then I'll uh, move over that way. But it's a very, very well-designed pattern. It, has, um, it kind of tells the whole story of the first book in images, which is really cool. I also like the, um, the design of the text. Um, so this is what I'm working on at the moment. Um, I set that to the side so I can find it later. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. I actually just realized I'm missing one, but it's okay. Um, up next is another Leela Studio. This one is Halloween Quaker. This is my uh, dark 13 stitching. This is what it'll look like when it's done. Or something like this, because I've miscounted the distance between motifs already. So I'm, uh, I'm up over here, which is the first page. Um, so this... Again, oh, sorry. I don't know if you guys saw that. My computer went dark for a second there. Um, this is everything called for. Um, fabric, floss, yada, yada. Okay, so I have like this crazy floss collection from clubs and stuff like that. And I'm terrible about doing my own conversions. I did better about that. Um, so this is where I am right now. Okay. Um, so again, kind of working on the first page here. Uh, first page goes, this is basically the first page. Once I finish up down here, well, let me clarify. I'm calling it a page finish. Um, because next time I grab this, I'm going to finish this spider motif 
And then there's some colors that go in the spider. Um, but there's, you know, three other spiders, I think, on there. So I'm not going to pull those out until I've finished all the other spiders. And there's some back stitching, But again, that is going to kind of require the whole motif to be done. So this is a page finish, except for like those colors and the little back stitching that goes there. Um, absolutely beautiful. It's going to be, this is an 11 by 11 Q snap, so it's going to be quite a big one. I've been working on it for a while. I'm looking forward to um, coming on to a new page, looking at a new part of it. All right, next up, I've put some serious work into um, a project that I'm doing for a friend. It was meant to be done before the baby was born. Baby's been here for a couple months now. At this point, I'm aiming for a first birthday. She didn't know it was coming, so I figure she can't be upset it's not done, right? Um, so this is uh, Though She Be Little, or Though She Be But Little. Um, my plan is to add the baby's name and birth date in this area once I once I get there. Hmm. Random floss outside the bag. Who knows where that goes. Uh, this I am doing again with the called for DMCs um, and this is a Zweigart Lugana Splash in 32 count so it's got um, it's a white fabric with some pale pink kind of splashy dots on it. Um, so this is where I am on this. The top corner done. Started the text. Um, so when I get it next, I'll be able to start adding the word little in this big black script. Um, These letters stitched up super fast. These took a little bit longer than I thought they might, but I think it's a beautiful script, so I'm not too upset about it. And you can kind of see, if I get in closer, you can see the pink splashes on the back of this. I kind of wanted to do um, a birth sampler that she, the, the baby might, when she's not a baby anymore, still want to have up. Um, you know, once you reach, once you get a little older, you appreciate it and you put those things back up. But I was hoping to, to do something that, um, that the baby would enjoy, you know, in those teenage and young adult years too. But you never know. Who knows what she'll like when she gets a little older, right? Right now, pretty much all she cares about is mommy. That's that's who and what she likes right now. Um, I have. Whoo! Wait until you see this rip roaring start on Stitchy Book Club. Right. Uh, this is the Little Women Book Club, Stitchy Book Club design. Um, clearly, I'm behind on this because all uh, I think four parts came out of this on this already. Excuse me. Um, this is all the kitted material. I bought the kit um, from Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. So it's there, the Lugana that, that she died for this. Um, or I don't know, maybe she didn't dye it, maybe she just got like an off-white, like a creamy off-white color. And the DMCs that she sent for the kit. Um, you know, again, not the best start, but it's gonna be beautiful when it's done. 
We'll get there eventually. Just one more, one more whip to show you. Like I said, I forgot um, Marshmallow World. That's fine, I'll show it to you whenever I work on it next. Um, the last whip is Dark Queen of the Sea which is uh, Autumn Lane Stitchery. This is on Bewitched 28 Count Linen by Under the Sea Fabric. She dyed this particularly for this project. Um, and this is all the call for, that everything you can see here is called for DMC. I changed a little bit on the top. I don't really want to pull her out of the um, cute snap, but uh, you can see if you're, interested in that it is on my instagram uh it, you can see the top and i talk a little bit about some of the changes i made uh, also on previous floss tubes um so i'm still all 12 parts of this have come out i'm still working on the may part because the may part is like this giant it comes like down like this this like giant piece of tentacle here and then like the june and july parts are the tentacles that are on the sides and then the August part, which is the last part, um, adds the beads and the back stitching and some of the specialty flosses and things like that. So I'm well behind. Um, I had to take a break from this for a while because I was getting actually very frustrated with how much of my time it was taking um, and feeling a little bitter that I couldn't work on other things. Um, and this is a hobby. That's not supposed to feel like that. So I kind of put it away for a little while. Uh, now I work on this, mostly I work on this two days a week. Um, sometimes I forget or sometimes I choose not to. Uh, but she'll get done. She'll get done. So um, that's that. So that is all my whips. Um, so as I was saying, I work on this Dark Queen of the Sea two days a week. I've created a little bit of a schedule for myself to follow so that I can touch different things and um, make progress on on different projects. Um, so Saturdays I work on Dark Queen of the Sea, uh, Under the Sea Saturday. And whenever she gets finished, obviously I'll need to replace that, but um, she gets worked on on Saturdays. Sundays, I can work on whatever I want. Sweet wee, right? Switch, stitch what you want when you want. Mondays, I go back to Dark Queen. Um, I call that one Not a Mermaid Monday. Tuesdays are stitch what you want. Wednesdays, I have all of my whips loaded on a tiny decision wheel. And I spin that and I stitch whatever... It tells me to, um, so hopefully the idea behind that being that I can touch some of the whips I don't necessarily regularly reach for, um, which has been awesome because it, it reminds me how much I like some of these things. You know, I don't necessarily think to pull them out, but when I do, I'm like, oh yeah, I really enjoy working on this. Um, I don't have it set to no resets or um, respins or anything, just whatever the wheel spins, that's what I go for. Um, so that's Wednesdays. Thursdays are stitch what you want. Um, I'm going to start either this week or next week. Fridays, um, I'm going to do full coverage Friday and pull this guy out. So I have a couple other full coverage projects I want to get to, but I feel like I need, you know, more than just a thousand stitches of blue before I even think about that. P.S. Can we talk about this is this thing is huge and it goes this this is the the top left so that's the width it's actually like longer than it is wide it's gonna be a big guy um, so I'm thinking about adding full coverage Friday in um, and then that brings us back to Saturday. I do um, stitch on things on their anniversary of when I started them as best as I can. I 
That reminds me, I need to update that calendar. I'm glad I talked to you guys about that. Um, the 13th is dark 13 stitching. So Halloween. Um, 25th, I do Christmas stitching. So those things kind of take over whatever's supposed to be supposed to be stitched on that day, the 13th and the 25th, um, or birthday stitch. So that's kind of my like loose configuration. I was thinking about adding in like a stitch long Sunday kind of thing to get caught up with things like Barbara Anna, the Dreaming Frida, and um, Stitchy Book Club, but I kind of like having days that I can just stitch what I want in there too, so we shall see. Um, so as far as plans go, that's kind of what the plan is, is to keep up with that schedule. Um, I've been itching to start things as I sit here surrounded by whips. Feel that pull a little bit less um but we shall see i have a, a ton of kitted projects i have a ton of not kitted projects too but i have a, a ton of things ready to go up in my craft closet that i'm just kind of dying to start i just gotta figure out for i have to figure out what the uh number of whips i'm comfortable having is right Everyone's different on that. Everyone has their, their sweet spot for the number of things they like to have up and running at any given time. I have just a little bit of haul to show you. Like I said, I've gotten other things. I kind of put it away. Um, it just kind of got a little, a little overwhelming. So um, I'm going to show you a few things that have come in recently and i'll get back to regular haul and stuff in my next video um something that i have two things that just came in today um from the nerdy needle design company i got this david rose um thread keep And she sent a little You're Simply the Best pin to go with it. Um, these have a little magnet on the back, which is kind of cool. Um, I guess you could either put it on your needle minder to keep your floss handy on your project. Um, the other thing I was thinking is it would be nice to stick a pair of scissors there, too. So you can easily find your scissors. But uh, if you have not, and I, I know... Um, Nerdy Needle has been talked about by a lot of people. Um, but in case you haven't heard of them, I highly recommend going to check out their, um, their goods because they have a lot of stitchy stuff, um, a lot of different kind of geeky fandom type things, which is right up my alley. Um, so... And it's just, it's really good quality, too. It's nice and thick. The holes are nice and, and smooth. So, um, definitely recommend. Birdie's down here wagging her tail. She recommends, too. It's not a chew toy, though. It's not a chew toy. The other thing that came in today, no, thank you. The other thing that came in today, um, Forbidden Fiber Company did a conversion. Um, if you got the Gilmore Girls box from Black Needle Society, there's kind of a full coverage pattern in there for um, Autumn in Stars Hollow. And, you know, I was looking at all the different flosses and whatnot for that, and then Forbidden Fiber Company did a conversion. So I went ahead and bought that. Um, so this is to replace the, um, the specialty flosses 
that are listed on the pattern. Um, great colors. So that's another full coverage I'm looking forward to starting. That's a small full coverage though. I mean, relatively speaking, um, not like Cinderella over there. But the colors are really beautiful and the variegation in some of these just absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This one, this one might be my favorite. This is um, Olympic. I don't know, it's not really picking up the color. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so, another project to start at some point, but I wanted to take advantage of the floss packs while they were available. On the topic of floss, I placed a while ago my first order from Ymir at Almond M&M's for her silks. Um, and I got two random, I mean, they, they go with each other. Wow. There we go. Uh, they go with each other, but they're not part of like a set or anything. Uh, this is Sangria Spritz and Sangria. I just love the purple and gray and white colors in there. Um, and you can see this one has a, like a longer repeat. And I could not resist her spring, this is how long ago I bought these, um, her spring flower collection. Um, she showed them and I went and bought them because I just could not resist. The colors, I don't think cameras do them justice at all. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, this one is dried rosemary. She's got that great variegation of that kind of sagey green, I guess rosemary, but um, wild hibiscus. Anthurium fire. Periwinkle peonies. Seaweed. This is um, almost a minty tone to it. Oh, the variegation in this one, guys. This is um, geranium rose. Look at that variegation. It's a little softer in person than the camera appears to be picking it up. It's um, definitely softer pinks. It's showing up a little bubble gummy. It's not. Um, orchid, it's like a white. Buttercup. This is accurate. This is a bright yellow. Beautiful, beautiful bright yellow. Lily of the Valley. This is um, also a variegated pink, but uh, a, so a softer, more subtle variegation. This teal color, agave nectar, love it. Um, Birds of Paradise, kind of a more gold yellow. And Lilac, which is in fact Lilac. Uh, they're all beautiful and something I really like about this collection, and I, there's no way I'm gonna be able to hold these up in such a way to show, um, is, yeah, I can't. They're, they're, that's the best I'm gonna be able to do, I think. They're co they coordinate. You could really pull in almost any combination of colors from this set, um, and they would work together. Um, beautiful. If you haven't visited Ymir's shop, Almond M&M's, please do so. Um, I just watched one of her floss tubes. She's doing um, an October and a December 
floss advent calendar. Uh, she did a beautiful skin conversion set that is on my list of things to buy. Um, definitely visit her. And the last bit of haul, this was one of those, oh, I forgot I ordered that, but go me. Um, the last bit of haul is uh, this project bag. This is from Whip It Up Project Bags on Etsy. Beautiful moths, purple moths on this blue background. That's the back and that's the front. Um, her bags are, if you're someone that likes to use um, 11 by 11 Q-snaps, that's kind of my go-to Q-snap size. Um, her bags, this isn't a good example with all of the extra fabric, but they do hold the 11 by 11 Q-snaps and all your materials just fine. So. Um, I know I always like to know that when I'm listening to a floss tuber because I tend to go with bigger Q-snaps because moving them is annoying. Um, I think that's it. I think that's, you know, I think I'm going to, I'm going to call it here. Um, I did not do a ton of preparation. I just felt like filming, so I pulled things. So I don't have a featured floss tuber. I don't have a quote. I don't have anything like that ready to go for you guys. But I wanted to jump, jump back in while I was feeling it uh, so that I could pick up with my normal stuff next time. Uh, thanks for spending some time with me. I really appreciate it. I've missed, I've missed talking to y'all. Um, Birdie's here to say goodbye. Um, we... We'll see you again. We'll try for two weeks. It'll be right around the start of school, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but we'll try for two weeks. We'll try to get back on our regular rotation and our, our normal filming and all our regular floss tube stuff. Um, if you've hung out with me this far, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Um, this community is, is truly fantastic. Uh, so again, I'm Nicole. This is I Practice Stitchcraft. Same username here on Instagram if you'd like to follow me there. Um, and that's it. Bye, guys.